Thanks for tuning in once again for our NASCAR Cup Series coverage on Prime Sports Network. Sorry we've been away for a couple of weeks, but if you know where I live, uh, you'll know why. Uh, actually, I don't live in... Uh, I live about a half hour... Uh, yeah, probably half hour east. Is it east? Nashville? I always get confused. West of Nashville now. Uh, of course, that city got demolished uh, about 10 days ago. Uh, and I was only about five minutes from Asheville. So it was a really trying uh, 10 days. But the internet came back yesterday. We're now in a new location. You can see the new backdrop. I still got to work on that. But it, how, how, how do you think about that, CJ? That's my new uh, sports. This is like real sports memorabilia from, from Greg De Palma. <laughs> <laughs> it is excellent. You need to get the checkered flag and the Ryan Blaney uh, pieces back up there, though. At yeah, some you're point, right. that can be fan. <laughs> there you go. There it is. I gotta figure out a way to. I gotta hang it. So, yes. Like right there you there. go. <laughs> Perfect. That would be good. And um, you know what I found too? Where is it? I found a. Um, I found my very first. Uh, oh. Press Hard pass. Time. This is there from 2000. Go. This Excellent. was the Daytona race that I always talk about. Is the first race that I ever went to. And actually, it turns out I never realized. It turns out it's the second race I've ever been to, and that's because I was looking over my uh, a whole bunch of stuff when I was moving, and I realized, you know what? I've got the inaugural Pennzoil 400 pass um, from the uh, race at Homestead which was November 14th, 1999. And of course, the Daytona race was the very next, I guess it was the very next race, the very next year, uh, which was uh, in 2000. Actually, no, 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 this was the July race. This was the, uh, yes, this was not the Daytona 500. This was that July uh, race. So anyway, so this is, I was going down memory, memory lane with all of the moving I did. And you know, when you start going in, you get all these boxes of things that you put in the garage because you don't have room for it. Now I have room. So now I've got to figure out a way to use it. So. so I still have the, what is it? Was it the Clash? It might have been the Clash or, or qualifying. It was one or the other. I still have my entry ticket to Daytona from the first weekend that you and I did our very first show together. Wow. So, well, I will have to, now that you're going down memory lane, I'll have to pull that out. I know exactly where it is, and I can show it to everybody who's watching maybe next week. Awesome. There you go. Yeah, I got a whole bag of passes and all sorts of stuff. So, <laughs> But those are the most important, because that was the yep. very first race I went to, obviously business-wise, being in, in Miami. And then, uh, yeah, the July Daytona race, which was awesome. So... But that's memory lane. Again, this is the way it's going to be set up now. I've got to, as, as you said, I've got to uh, get, get working with, with, with the checkered flag and, and, and Blaney and so forth. But we've got uh, a lot to talk about here regarding a big race coming up on Sunday because of the fact that uh, this is another race that is going to end around in the postseason. So... Um, let's go ahead then. I've got it here somewhere. I've got the updated standings. So let's pop those up. And let's see. You can see that, right, CJ? I got it. Yep. All right. So let's see. Where are we? Let's go down. Where's the cutoff? Oh, not this again. I got to click the cutoffs. Okay. And this takes a little bit for some reason. Let's see. There it is. Okay. So there you go. You got Byron who looks like he's in comfortable shape. Christopher Bell is comfortable. Kyle Larson's comfortable. So no Byron, chance that they're going to that, that, that they're gonna have an issue, right? Byron is actually the only person who has completely qualified. So he got enough points over the first two races this round. He is guaranteed a spot in the final eight. Christopher Bell, Kyle Larson, Denny Hamlin, Alex Bowman, all of those guys are looking relatively good. Bowman, certainly the most nervous of that bunch because you're starting to get into, if you have a bad day very early, then you might miss out on points. Blaney is relatively comfortable. Uh, when you start talking about Tyler Reddick, there's roughly 21 points that separate Tyler Reddick in seventh place down to, um, I think it is Daniel Suarez in 10th, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so the tight, the points battle around that 
cutoff line after eighth position starts to get pretty tight. Yeah, it's 21 points, but that's basically two stage wins. Uh, it's you know finishing in the top half of the field versus finishing in the bottom half of the field in the race. And we know that this road course is considered a wild card race. They changed the track. There are a lot of questions that are out there. So I would say anybody from a Tyler Reddick on back is probably feeling the pressure this weekend. And then there are your bubble drivers. Gano in the best shape. And it, is it pretty much win or forget it for the other three drivers? Uh, yeah, certainly for Cindric and Briscoe, I think they're in a must-win situation. Joey Logano, I think, can force his way in with a solid day and, and stage points. Uh, I, I would suspect one of the top eight up there is going to have some kind of problem. So if Joey Logano is, is, is able to outscore, you know, some, um, uh, who is it, uh, Chase Elliott, say by 13 points, he's going to be in. Still has work to do, so no question about that. But I think uh, Suarez probably also finds himself in a must-win situation because I just don't think, while it's mathematically possible, I just don't think you're going to have two drivers have as much trouble plus Suarez finishing and doing what he needs to do in both stages as well as the race finish to move his way forward. So I think realistically, Suarez on down needs a win. I think Joey Logano with a very good day. Um, he needs some help, but with a very good day, I think Joey Logano can push his way back in. Yeah, look at this. Three Fords uh, in, in trouble, uh, and only one of the Ford. That's the defending champ, Ryan Blaney, uh, on the inside right now. So uh, we'll, see, uh, we'll see what happens there. How, where's Ford have won the last two only, right? Championships? Yes. Okay. So it was Blaney Logano. Who was before that? Right. Was that Larson? That was... Uh, uh, Larson, and then prior to that, I believe, was Elliot. Yeah, okay. All right, so it's been a while for Toyota, then. It has been. Okay. They've been close. All right, so there you go. Let's do a quick recap of what happened while I was gone. And let's see. Let's talk about, first of all, the... the uh, race at Kansas a uh, very good race by the way and Kansas seems to be a really good track now with the new setup uh, what do you think about because uh, look one of the interesting things about this round is that we, we we now have and this doesn't happen often but you know we now have uh, back to back uh, was it back to back or, and, and three out of four drivers, non-playoff drivers winning? Certainly two wins of the last of this round. Um, the two races held so far are both non-playoff uh, drivers that won. I think Busher probably made it three if you include the first round. Uh, but yeah, Ross Chastain, um, I think Kansas take a step back. Actually, Kansas, I think you're right. I, the changes that they've made to that track really suit this new generation of car with the ground effects. Uh, it's still difficult. It's still more aero sensitive than I think everybody would like. But with the progressive banking, uh, the way it is at Kansas now, I think it has now produced two mul multiple really good close, close races, races, very competitive. Uh, you know, Ross Chastain um, uh, actually started 20th. We talk about track position being an important factor on 1.5 mile ovals. He came from 20th and won. In fact, two of the top three, both, uh, you know, Truex was in the playoffs, but had been knocked out. Two of the top three uh, weren't alive in the playoffs. William Byron was the highest place alive driver in the playoffs. He started sixth, but by the way, Chastain and Truex both started outside of the top 15 and were able to finish inside of the top three. So that just goes to show uh, the new car, what's, pay what's possible, and Kansas, the type of racing that it produces, really suits this new generation. Yeah, it, there, it was it was it was fun, no question. And uh, even though a playoff driver did not win it, that's okay because Chastain. It was it was, it was interesting because Chastain and Truex were both in it, and uh, they've had the worst time. Um, and uh, Chastain, give him credit, hanging in there. Kyle Busch, I mean, again, Kyle, at the end, wow. Uh, I don't know it's what you could say about luck. the luck, bad luck. I don't know Terrible if he was being luck all aggressive season. or what, but... Yeah. Terrible luck all season. And he's still got time. Maybe this week. 
possibility. But yep, Chastain gets it. So so we got Chastain, Stenhouse, and Busher. So we've got three out of the five races in the playoffs have been won by drivers who are not in the playoffs. Interesting. The only other winners being, of course, Logano. Actually, is it four out of five? Trying to remember who won the prior races. Who won Atlanta? Let's see. Here. So we got Chastain. Leano. We got Busher. We got Stenhouse. And who else do we have? Who am I missing here besides Logano? Busher at Watkins Glen. Chastain. Oh, yeah, Busher was Watkins. Yeah, who was at Bristol? Larson won Bristol. So three out of the five so far. That's it. Okay. Yeah, Larson dominated Bristol. We, how can we, that's probably why we forgot it. <laughs> Because exactly. You wanted to forget it. Exactly. That was hard to watch. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Uh, only Larson and Logano, as far as the play, the uh, current playoff drivers. Okay. So we've got Watkins, and then of course Talladega last week, and Ricky Stenhouse winning. Uh, boy, Ricky just uh, finds ways to put himself in position. But and and when what was it? Centric got. Uh, he basically got wrecked, but yes. that was Kozlowski, right? Kozlowski was in it. I think the, he was the one that hit Sindrick. The push, the push came from behind Kozlowski, though. Yeah, Kozlowski was the one. I don't put it on Sindrick. I don't put it on Kozlowski. I forget who the driver was that was pushing from behind, but yeah, it was like a three or four car okay um, pile up. And if you recall, the announcers saying. Oh, Sindrick got out too far, and that's yeah. what happens yeah. when you get a run. Like, I, I, sorry, no, that is absolutely not Sindrick's fault. I feel like he got ran through. I feel like Ryan Blaney got ran through as well. So uh, both of those guys looked like they had cars that could win. Unfortunately, Unfortunately it didn't pan out for them. That's, uh, you know, that's the perils of racing at a super speedway, let alone Talladega. But I found it unfortunate that the announcers sounded like at the time that they were trying to blame Sindrick, uh, which I completely disagree with. Yeah. Okay. So let's take a look at the odds. Let's actually take a look. I haven't looked at the futures in a while, so let me pop those up. I mean, I haven't looked at a lot lately. Uh, matter of fact, that was the first thing I did when I got internet yesterday. First time in 10 days, because I, I, I did a complete media blackout. So I only knew about 5% results of sports that I followed, and that includes football. 5%. So I knew nothing about the two NASCAR races. It was the first thing I went to. So let's take a look at the odds. Well, it's got to still be, well, you know, what do you think? It's going to be Larson still going to be in front? Yeah, I think uh, Larson's been the favorite pretty much all season. I don't see him going away, especially, you know, considering he's still sitting third in the standings. So I think Larson's going to be your favorite. Um I think Bell, probably, maybe even with him, but I think uh, William Byron's going to be shooting up the rankings. So you think it'll be it'll be like the, the top four drivers are going to be the favorites, and then there'll be a gap. I'm going to guess that Denny Hamlin swip, slipped a little bit, but yeah, I think the top four are going to be William Byron's still going to be off of Larson and Bell, uh, but okay. I think there'll be a relatively sizable gap before you get to whoever five is. Okay, let's take a look. Big surprise. And see, no surprise. We, we've talked about this on our last show before these two races about how, look at the odds. Kyle Larson is 4-1, to one, and he's been basically 4-1 to one all year. So it's Absolutely. like, this shows you, you, you just, it does not pay to go with the favorites to win the NASCAR championships right now. All right, next, there's Bell. Not too far behind. We're going to go Byron next, right? I'm actually going to go, yeah, I, I think Byron, just because he's secured advance, may have overtaken Hamlin at this point. Okay. Oh! Redick. Wow. <laughs> That's a swing. Wow. Oh, wow. That is, that is kind of crazy. Okay. Uh, let me see. I'm going, to, I'm going to go through these. You can comment on it. 
Uh, yeah, there's Denny Hamlin, Byron right up there with him. That's what I would have expected if it weren't for the Tyler Reddick craziness that is going on there. Uh, so I think Hamlin and Byron, relatively good. Uh, crazy. Absolutely crazy. Then you got uh, Blaney. Yeah, Blaney, Elliot, Logano. Yeah, Logano up there. So people believe, like I do, that Logano can point his way in. Uh, I think he can get that done. It's a road course. He's been doing pretty well so far at the road courses, um, this one in particular as well. So I think the ability for him to make up those 13 points or whatever it is is there. It's going to be hard to do it on Chase Elliott, though. Uh, but I do think some of the, the guys in the top positions may end up having problems. Uh, Tyler Reddick, actually, maybe now that I think about it with what he's been doing on road courses and his ability to get the job done on those tracks, I think might be coming forward. Um, so I, I, I think Reddick uh, may be up there because of his road course ability and potentially the, the chance of him maybe winning this weekend. Uh, but I think from what I've seen so far on the screen so far uh, down to Logano, I think um, aside from the Reddick one, I pretty much agree with. Was that you didn't hear me? Did you? When I was just talking a couple minutes about a minute ago. Did not. Okay, I want to make sure I muted. Uh, nope. I this, this way we won't have to edit the video. <laughs> I was expecting a very important call. We're buying a car, and I and I knew I was going to get an important call to ask an important question. I was like, oh, you know, I don't want to edit the video if I can avoid it. So I'm glad that you were able to get through that okay without me because the. It is a surprise, isn't it, a little bit, that Byron is the fifth choice? It is. So I, I think Byron, as I've talked about all season and we've talked about for years now at this point, he really comes alive in the playoffs. I think it's starting to happen. He had a fantastic round this one, so I think he's starting to hit his stride. Points leader! And will come through <clears throat> while you're gone at yeah, and while you were gone, I talked myself into understanding a little bit of rationalization of maybe why Reddick is there, just because he's been so good on road courses recently. We got a road course this week coming up, so that puts him in good position to advance. Um, but I do think down through Logano, um, I think Reddick is misplaced, but I think down through Logano, I relatively agree with Blaney. Maybe I'd put a little bit higher just because he's had a fast car, but yeah. you know, certain races where he's had the chance to, but hasn't had the luck fall his direction. And I think if that luck changes, he is, he, he's going to be tough to beat. So right now, we, what would you say are the, because we'd have to take a look at these, these drivers here. You got Larson, Bell, Reddick, Hamlin, Byron, and, and Blaney. So these are all pretty much the favorites between four and seven. So out of that group, um, who would be your first pick, knowing that the odds are a little low, even though you are getting, you know, two to three points more if you decide to go with Hamlin, Byron, Blaney? Yeah, if I had to take anybody from this group, it would be really tough for me to choose between Bell and Byron. Uh, because, again, I think Byron comes alive in the playoffs. So he's started to do that the past couple of weeks. I think the next couple of tracks suit him pretty well, too. Uh, Bell, we know, um, can be competitive every single week. Uh, so I think those two get into the final four. Um, Larson, you know, as we've talked about before, he's been the favorite all season. Yeah. Um, he's been really hit or miss. I'm not saying he can't championship, but it's that hit or miss thing that makes me a little bit nervous of taking those odds with him. Yeah, I, I can't at this point go with Reddick because I think that, you see, going with him before, that was the smart thing to do. Now the odds have gotten to the to the favorite portion, and he's cooled off. So that's the way I look at it there. Obviously, Bell is my preseason championship pick, so I'm happy already I have him. And I do think Byron and Blaney, you know, I, I feel pretty good to tell you the truth about just saying, hey, you know what, maybe I'll just take Byron and Blaney and Bell, uh, or two out of those three, let's just say. I don't know if you could take three. Um, you may be able to, but... Uh, especially since two of them, Byron and Blaney, are, are, are two of the higher out of this group. Uh, but that's that, that's the way I would do it. I, I'd probably go Bell, Byron, Blaney in order. Um, and then, yeah, Bell, Byron, Blaney. And then with the other group, 
there's really three of them, and that's Elliot, Logano, and Bowman. So Elliot is still, you know, right around that 10 to 1 number. Logano's dropped down to 12. Of course, we talked a lot a few months ago about him being a bargain when he was in the 18s and 22s. And so, uh, but he's still a good bargain at this point at 12 to 1. And Bowman, uh, again, we've talked about him as being one of the best long shots uh, coming into the playoffs. He continues to be that way, and he's still... And look, I, I'm, I'm not surprised he's 20-1. to 1. Somebody's got to be 20-1 to 1 with all those other solid drivers up there. So I just... I, I think Bowman's a really good play still at 20-1, to 1 and, and forget about the other guys. Yeah, I completely agree. I think Logano, if things start going his direction, he remains a bargain. Like I said multiple times, I feel like he's going to point his way back into the top eight and be able to advance this weekend. Bowman is a fifth place driver in the standings. He's got a 12 point advantage over Tyler Reddick in seventh. Uh, he's le- he's more assured of going through to this next round of eight than um, you know seven other guys that are that are out there in the top 12 now. Look at Reddick in the final 12 now. Yeah, exactly right. So uh, yeah, I so I, I think Bowman at 20. Um, it, it takes a v- all you have to do is get hot for two races. And this championship is yours under this new format. And Bowman with Hendrick Motorsports, he's absolutely capable of doing that. Okay. Let's go to the race. And it is, of course, a road course. SVG. No oh. surprise. Yeah. <laughs> we went over this at Chicago, and we were validated. Um, and, and it's just... It, it, now, look, his odds were like two to one or, or close to even money at Chicago, which was absolutely ludicrous by the time it got to race day, you know, showtime, whatever you want to call it. Minutes before the race, he was down to almost even money. That is a major no-no. Here at four to one, I still think he has a chance, just like the Chicago race, to go down if he has a good show of it uh, regarding qualifying. And qualifying is important as it should be on road courses, but not as much as you would think because... Out of the six races at the Roval, five of the winners have started in the top ten, but only one have started in the top five, and that was Chase Elliott starting second back in 2020. So, And by the way, Elliott's the only driver to win outside the top ten starting position. He won 19th back in 2019. So Elliott's got both of those. Um only one outside the top 10, only one inside the top five. So he's been able to do it, but no pole sitters. So you see, so Shane Van Gisbergen goes out there and he's on the pole and he's just looking really fast. And it, you want to go ahead and bet him and bring those odds down to two to one and even money. And you want to go that route again, but don't, don't say that we didn't warn you or at least give you a pause for thought. So, um, yeah, that's the way I think. And I, and I, and I know you kind of feel the same way. Yeah, I, I, I think Shane Van Gisbergen is fantastic, and I think he can go out and win. Um, I would say if you're hell-bent on taking him, you better do it now uh, before he qualifies and goes to even money. Uh, Yes, he absolutely has a chance of winning. He can do it. Um, He was almost in position to win at Watkins Glen, but made a mistake. Chris Buescher forced him into it. Chris Buescher came away with the, the win in an incredible road course race. Um, you know, Chicago, again, he, he got caught up in a problem that wasn't his, of his own making, if I recall that one yeah. correctly. Well, and, and, it was, um, and it was slick, track. It was. Yep, exactly right. So if you're going to take SVG, take him now, because if he qualifies on the front row, I think those odds go down extremely uh, low, probably to even money like, like it was in Chicago. But I think there are some other values that are in there. I mean, AJ Allmendinger is on the screen right now. Uh, he won last year. He's a part timer, uh, but really good at this track and really good when he comes on at the road courses. Tyler Reddick, I just talked about a couple times, is how he's stepped up his road course game, and you're getting double the money for Almondinger, and you're almost getting triple the money for Reddick. So think about where you want to put your money and what type of return you're willing to take versus the risk. I think uh, Van Gisbergen comes with risk for a lot of reasons. He also has a smaller upside than some of the guys with a similar amount of risk, um, but uh, with greater upside. Yeah, yeah. and again, we, we, we try to make sure that, that you, you, you remember, it's not just the driver. The driver, 
the reason why Van Gisbergen is with the, where he is is because of the team. So he does not have the best team. And so it's a matter, does, does the rest of that team, can they come through for him? And that's what you're also betting on or against. So here, here's the point. So as you were saying, you can get Redick at 11 and AJ at 8. All right. So let's say you want to put 100 bucks down on shit. Let's say you have $100 to wager and you're like, yeah, I, I don't know where to go with it, but I like these. I, I like all of these top drivers. And All right. So let's say you put 100 bucks on Van, Van Gisbergen. You return $400. Okay. Instead of that, you can put 50 on AJ and 50 on Reddick. Okay. So you've got your, so now you've got two drivers who are nearly as good as Van Gisbergen on a road course and AJ and Reddick. And if AJ wins, you get the same return, same return, 400 bucks. And if Reddick wins, you're actually making more. And that gives you two drivers for the price of one. Exactly right. That's the strategy that I would take on this one. Uh, yeah, I like Van Gisbergen, but at the same time, um, to be able to split my money, have two two eggs in my basket versus just one, uh, for all the reasons that you said. Yeah, yeah, Van Gis it is a team sport. Um, yeah, Van Van Gisbergen, it's colleague. They're they're a decent team. They're not Hendrick though. Hendrick's been around a lot longer. Yeah, Hendrick makes mistakes, but not as many probably as Colleg does. Uh, their pockets are much deeper. Their resources are, are, are much more prevalent, and their experience is much more great. So I think to have two guys like an Almendinger past winner, <clears throat> Reddick, who's been fantastic on road courses, I think those um, as a pairing versus putting all your eggs in one basket or one egg in the basket versus uh, when you choose Van Gisbergen is certainly the path that I would recommend. And as far as these drivers, okay, let's just take, oh, by the way, just a, a couple more uh, trends. Uh, Chevy has won four out of the six races at the Roval. Ford and Toyota have one each. And, uh, and, and, and even though Ford had a very successful 2018 in the inaugural race at the Roval, the fact is it's really been more Chevy versus Toyota for um, the last five with Chevy ahead. Uh, so you really want to be taking a look at the Chevy drivers first, then Toyota, and then Ford. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, and, and, and just taking a look at the – so you got – right there you got Larson and Byron, first of all. And his teammate, Chase Elliott, is sitting right here at 12-1. to 1. Now, the only thing with Elliott right now is just that he's just in a – we just keep saying it. He's just – even though he's had a very successful season after what happened last season – there is absolutely no sign of championship driver. There just isn't. I'm not seeing any of that. We saw a little bit of it earlier in the year. But he needs to kind of, like, this would be the perfect race to get it going now. The perfect race. The, it's like you were saying before with Bowman. Just use, win, go out there, win this race, and then just do what you have to do uh, to round out the season because this has been a very good tra track for Chase Elliott. And if he doesn't perform well here on Sunday, I think that's a, that's, a, that's a negative sign. And then throw in the fact that the, the other teammate is Bowman, and he sits there at 18-1. to 1, And Bowman is also a driver that has had pretty decent success at this track. So uh, he's actually one of the better uh, sleeper picks, uh, long shot picks, if you want to take a look at, uh, speaking of uh, Bowman. Yeah, Bowman's average finish at this track from five starts is 6.4 um which is just absolutely incredible elliot's average start or average finish from six starts at this track is 8.2 and elliot has two wins i think the problem completely agree with you uh elliot doesn't happen to show the championship spark right now yeah that could change this week but i think the thing that's really going against him this weekend is that he used to dominate the road courses and as you said at every road course race that we've had so far this year when we've talked about Elliott, he's not won a road course race since the new car has been introduced. And if you look at his finishes at this track in particular, last year was his first one since first top 10 at this track since the new car was introduced. He had back to back wins in 19 and 20, uh, went on to finish 12th and 21, 20th and 22, 
and was ninth in 23. But if you look at Alex Bowman, his teammate, fourth, second, eighth, tenth, eighth, rounding out to an average finish of 6.4. This has been a really good spot for Alex Bowman. Uh, so if you're not going to bet on Alex Bowman, I highly recommend making sure that you get him in your fantasy line. Yes. And speaking, by the way, that, that uh, stat you just brought up, Bowman's average finish of 6.4 is the best of any driver. And he's not one at the track. Elliot has two wins. <clears throat> So that, that speaks even more volumes as to why you need to be considering Alex Bowman this week. Reddick yep. is second, by the way. It's 7.0. Yep. And then Elliott is third at 8.2. Logano, by the way, is fourth. And uh, he is all the way down here <laughs> at 40 to 1. Crazy. By the way, Blaney's like, fifth. No respect. And he's yeah, 45 to 1. Record here as well. And you don't typically think of Blaney as a great road course racer, uh, but here, for whatever reason, he's got the win. And yeah, he kind of lucked into it because of the smash up in the, the chicane on that that race. But uh, he's gone on to perform relatively consistently uh, since then as well. Yeah, Larson, uh, you know, if, if you just uh, take a look at his career here, it, it really has just been one race. One race. And then exactly. and that's it. He hasn't done much except for the 21 win. And by the way, he only led like eight laps in that race, right? Eight laps. He led more laps when he finished 25th uh, than he did when he won. He led 47 laps in that first race when he finished uh, 25th. Uh, but if you just for comparison's sake, we talked about the average finish of um, Bowman there versus Elliott. Uh, Larson's average finish at this track is 17.4. Yeah. So it just does not to me. It just it just doesn't make sense to go with Van Gisbergen and Larson here. But Byron, I do like, and if you take a look at it, he's the, he's led the second most laps at the track, uh, and he also has you know good you know fifty percent in, in the uh, top ten, um, and he hasn't won, and I think maybe may a good thing. And I don't think he has anything to lose anyway, because like you said, he's already on to the next round. Exactly right. Plus, he's walking into the weekend on the heels of back-to-back finishes of second and third. So momentum is at an all-time high. He was very close to winning Talladega. He was close to winning at Kansas the week before. Uh, I think William Byron, coupled with his prior success at this track, which last year he was the runner-up finisher, by the way, he started 14th in that race. So he can come from behind outside the top 10 and get a great finish. Uh, I think Byron's just got a head full of momentum, and I think this is a time where he starts showing the Byron that we know uh, and have come to uh, expect when it comes to the playoffs. Yeah, Redick, uh, as good as a road course driver he, that he is, again, unfortunately, he has just cooled off. Yeah. And that's what happens. You get hot. And you don't want to get hot too early. And the good thing is he's 11-1. And it's a good track for him. He hasn't won yet here either. So that's all good. And he, need, he needs to do something. The only thing is, is I wonder if he's going to be too conservative. Yeah, it, that, that, very well is, that very well could play out. Uh, he hasn't finished better than 20th in any of the last four races since Atlanta. Atlanta was his last top 10. He finished sixth there. He was 10th before. That was the first race of the playoffs was uh, Atlanta at Darlington. He finished 10th. So <clears throat> it was Darlington the first race of the playoffs. I'm getting confused with the calendar at this point because we've been off a week. But um, yeah, Reddick. Two weeks. I, I, I just think, yeah. <laughs> so Reddick, I, I agree with you. I think he cooled off, which is why I was so surprised in the futures that he was so high. I think people are putting more weight on him coming back. Uh, being a road course race, that's got to be the only reason I can think of. And by the way, this is the worst streak that Reddick has been on all season. He has not had another point this season so far where he's had four consecutive races, race finishes of 20th or worse. Uh, Bell, meanwhile, I like. I know he hasn't had a lot of laps led here or any sort of dominating races. And when he won in 2022, he led two laps. But still, you're getting... 12 to 1. And unlike Reddick, he's getting back into a good groove. So uh, he's in a good position right now. 
And he's also, even though he's not statistically in, he's he's in a good spot. So it, he, it's one of those situations where probably at some point halfway through the race, he's going to be in. And then it's all about, hey, yeah. let's just go out and try to win this thing. So, You're exactly right. You're exactly right. Bell just needs to get the stage points or, or be assured that um, he's got the finish that he needs and it's going to be all about the win. And the thing that's most attractive about Christopher Bell is not necessarily his past results. And yeah, he won here in 2022, which is great. And we know that he can win on road courses. Uh, but his starting position at this track, if you throw out the first start in 2020 when he started 35th, since then he's finished or started, qualified fourth, eighth, and second. He was on the front row last year. And he's led laps in three of those four races. So this is also a good track for Christopher Bell, despite the fact that the overall averages may not put him up there with, say, an Alex Bowman or a Chase Elliott or somebody like that. Denny Hamlin, uh, <laughs> I, I don't like him this week. He doesn't have a great history here. But what, what I do like is the fact at least that he's starting. I mean, he, and I'm looking big picture here, of course, is that things are starting to get a little bit better for him. Uh, he's consistent top tens lately. And that's what I'm looking for this week out of, out of Hamlin. If he can give uh, another effort like that. But you are talking, just like we said with Logano and Blaney, you are talking about a 45 to one shot. You know, I mean, those are three drivers right there, Logano, Blaney, and Hamlin, that are 40 to 45 that I, I just can't not put at least you know a, you know a buck or two on because they're they're capable yeah i think any of these three guys are fantastic and don't forget about Cindric. i mean Cindric hasn't had the greatest success at this particular track but we know from his xfinity days plus his initial races within the cup series that road courses are a place where he generally starts toward the front and generally gets out front and leads laps. So don't discount him either. However, I do think Logano, Blaney and Hamlin <clears throat> of the bunch are probably the best uh, long shots that you've got out there. We talked earlier about how good Logano has been at this track. We talked about Ryan Blaney, who's not who you typically think of when you come to road courses, has a remarkably good record at this track. Denny Hamlin, <clears throat> It's about putting the race together for him. He started on the, the pole twice at this track, and he started ninth last year, ended up finishing 37th due to a crash, ended up coming out. Uh, but when he started on pole in 2021, he ended up leading 25 laps, and we've seen Denny Hamlin lead a lot of laps at road courses, so it might all come together. But yeah, any three of these guys, four of these guys, if you include Cindric, uh, I would not be shocked if they were in the fight for the win, if not uh, winning it at the end of the day. Kyle Busch, they got this group here. Chastain just won last week, so I mean two weeks ago. So uh, it's going to be kind of hard for him, even though um, he, he hasn't had like a great history, statistically speaking. But I do know, I was looking over some of his uh, stats earlier, and he's been very good at the road courses this year. 7th at Coda, 5th at Sonoma, 4th at Watkins Glen. He keeps getting better and better. So, but, but he's 15 to 1, and it's like on that border of, do I go with Chastain, expecting him to win 2 out of 3, it's real tough, or, because I know I'm already going with Bowman, or do I go to Kyle Busch? I mean, considering that Kyle has had good history here, but the opposite, unfortunately, as, as great as a road course driver he's been compared to the rest of the field and, and, and history, even at this track, and he's got um, uh, no wins, though, uh, right? He has not won here. So, right. But the thing is, unlike Chastain, he has not performed well this year on road courses. Yeah, that's that's very true. I had forgotten about that. Um, yeah, he's been not present at each of the road courses that we've had this season. And you talked before earlier about his bad luck, and that has very much struck again. It's been like a three or four race streak now where he's had very poor finishes. And yeah, he's been in contention to win, but he gets knocked out. Uh, it's kind of Martin Truex's um, <clears throat> position this se has been this whole season as well. At this track, though, Bush has finished in the last three races, fourth, third, and third. And one of those third-place finishes in 2022, 
he started 20th. So he's another driver that can come all the way through the field and is a pretty good road course racer and has some good success at this track. Whereas, like you said, with Chastain, complete opposite. He's been better on the road courses this year, uh, but doesn't have the history at this particular track. He's only led three laps. He only started inside the top 10 once. He only has one top 10 finish, and that was last year. It came from the 12th position. So he qualified 12th and kind of hung out around there all day, pulled himself forward two positions to finish 10th. I'm not as um, high on Chastain as I would be on Bush for roughly the same price. Yeah, and, you know, I, I don't really see any – forget the long shots. I mean, that's just there's, – there's nobody down here that in any way, shape, or form look enticing or have something to go on that uh, would, would give me uh, – some incentive. I think we're only talk. Th this is as far as I'll go. Logano, Blaney, Hamlin, um, and like you said, if you want to go with Cindric as well at thirty-five, uh, Truex just has not had a good history at this track. He's a good road course driver. He did have a good result a couple of weeks ago, as I mentioned, in Kansas. So maybe that'll rub off on Truex that Chastain's had just as bad as you know season as Truex, and yet he was able to win. I'm not sure this is the week to do it, but you are getting twenty to one, and he's a qualified road course driver. So that's the one thing I would look at. And to tell you the truth, if he winds up having a good, I don't know, are they, are they practice? They're going to do practice and qualifying, right? Yeah, they changed the track, so they've got to give them practice. There's a reconfiguration to include a hairpin uh, prior to going back out onto the oval portion of the track in order to encourage passing, so introducing a heavier braking point. So they got to give them time to be able to get used to that. They also reconfigured a little bit, made the apex tighter in that chicane uh, before you come to the start-finish line. So they're going to have some time to be able to get used to those things make sure that their their cars and settings are all tuned for that uh, prior to getting going for the race on Sunday. Okay, so I, it, it, I guess my point is going to be that if he ends up looking good, not great, because if it looks great, then the odds are going to come way, way down and I'm, I'm out. But if he looks good enough, like let's say fifth and sixth, and his odds drop to 18 or 16 even, then I might take a look at Truex. Um, and that's it. That's the only way I would do it um, because I'd rather in this area here go with Kyle Busch and Bowman, definitely Bowman first. McDowell, forget it at 16. I, I get a little bit of why they're giving him respect here, but not at 16. And this Ty Gibbs stuff is just going at it. I don't understand what to do. We've, we've been totally confused about why he's getting such, you know, such respect by the odds makers over the past month or two when he's basically done nothing. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, forget him at 14 to one. Um, and Bush has already got a win uh, a few weeks ago. So he's out, especially at 12 to one. So yeah, so in this area, it's like, I'll go Kyle, definitely Bowman first, Kyle second. And then if I was thinking of a third, then that's when I would, I, I would, I would uh, probably you know, give Martin Truex a little bit of a look. Yeah, and even with Truex, though, I'm still, <laughs> he's, he, he's not over his luck. This has just no. been a pit season, unfortunately. So, again, I, I'd bank on somebody like a Cindric having another breakout day because he's been good on road courses, um, still in the playoffs contention. I'd be looking at that Cindric Lugano, Blaney, Hamlin area. All right, so let's go with the picks. And, uh, by the way, uh, Ross Chastain led the most laps at Watkins Glen, you know, the last road course race, he led 54 laps there. He had, that was a career best. He had led a combined 49 laps in 22 previous road course races. So just keep that in mind with Ross Chastain coming in to another road course considering. Um, and you know what? He's probably right there, again, because he's close enough to Truex that you might say, okay, Kyle Busch, Bowman, if I'm going to go with someone else in that group, I'd, I'd go Chastain over Truex, even though Chastain already won. So, all right, picks. What are you going to do? Who's your top pick? I'll go with Christopher Bell as my top pick. Christopher Bell is going to be the top pick. I like it, all right? If you're going to go with Bell as your top pick, I'm going to go with Byron. 
I was hoping you'd say that. I was going to leave Byron for you. Um, for my middle pick, this one's tougher. Um, it is? Yeah, it is because I mean I, I don't I don't feel strongly about any one of them. So <laughs> oh, you got it's it. almost. I it's mean, like Bell is twelve to one though, so you've already <clears throat> taken yeah, kind, of, kind of a middle one. Yeah, fair enough. So, so you can I, go back into that group if you want to. Yeah, I would go back. Um, so then um, if I go back, I will... I really like Bowman. So I'll take Bowman. Okay. So Bowman and Bell. And if, and if you're going to go Bowman, I'll go ahead with Bush. So you got Bell Bowman, I got Byron and Bush. So now we go to the long shots. And then I'll go for that swing that I mentioned on the long shots. I'll actually put uh, Sindrick in as my long shot to see if he can rise to the occasion after having the car to win, potentially win last week, see if he can bounce back on a road course that he has not had great luck at, even though he is a good road course racer and see if he can get the job done. He has to win. All right, I like Ball that. Yeah, I, I mean, it's again. I, I would definitely recommend putting some a couple of bucks on Cindric Logano, Blaney, and Hamlin, and and then again go with uh, maybe a, a combination of uh, definitely go Bowman for sure, and then that 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 maybe two for the price of one with Bell and Byron uh, might be good. And, and I'm going to go ahead and take Blaney. It's been a while since I've taken Blaney, but it's the best road course for Blaney, and. Uh, the way he's starting to get going again, and and the only reason he'll have a bad result now and then is if something happens that's under his, you know, he's not in control over. So, I think that's a good sign for him, and he should definitely be. I mean, I don't know. I, I tell you the truth, I don't even understand as much as you want to give respect to some of these drivers, but seriously, I don't think Truex, Suarez, and, and even Cindric because he's ahead. I don't think those drivers should be ahead of Logano and Blaney. I agree with you. So I, I think Logano and Blaney, to tell you the truth, should be more like 25 to 1, 30 to 1 think, at the highest. <laughs> well, I was going to say, I think uh, Logano and, and Blaney are more like the 18, 20 range where I was having a hard time, you know, picking any of those guys. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I think either one of them... Um, is a better choice and you can get both of them for for one of these guys and, and get the same return same strategy as we talked about with shane van gisbergen but uh gibbs at 14 chastain at 15 suarez yeah okay they can win on road courses but again they've won their race this year it's going to be hard for chastain to do th two out of three uh, michael mcdowell's done nothing at this track yeah he's been good on road courses but he's done nothing at this track in particular so why is he up there? I would take that that whole set of three that you called out and replace Gibbs, Chastain, and McDowell with them right now. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good to me. Now we just got to go out there and win. Exactly right. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's the easy part. Uh, all right. So I am going to return to the starting lineup report here on Prime Sports Network, and that is going to be coming up. Uh, taking a look right now, that would be a, this is the Sunday race. We're taking a look at Saturday, and it looks like they're going to be practicing at 12.30 start time, and they're going to be ending qualifying by 3. So you've got a two-and-a-half-hour practice and qualifying back-to-back uh, -back between 12.30 and 3. That means uh, I should be on the air uh, recording the video sometime around 3 4 o'clock on Saturday. So keep an eye on that. Um, I haven't checked the time of a uh, football game when I might be doing that. That could be the only thing I could delay it uh, for, for, uh, for a little bit later time. But just so you know, it's roughly around when we'll have a uh, starting, uh, well, we'll take again and look at the driving notes, the speed charts for practice and qualifying here. And, uh, and you can check that out. And I'll give you a little bit more of an update on after looking over those notes of how that uh, could affect everything based on what we've just gone over today. Then next week, we start talking about another round. We have one more full round to go before the final four. Vegas, 
Homestead, and Martinsville. Uh, w- w- anything within those three races that you think will be, you know, which one of those three do you think is going to be the most important? Just based Martin. on the track itself, not, <laughs> well, obviously Martinsville. It's Martinsville. the in route one. But. Well, for two reasons. Yeah, I think Martinsville won because it's the cutoff to be able to make the final four. Um, so at least two drivers are going to be of the final four are going to be decided at Martinsville. So it's important just because of that. However, um, Martinsville uh, kind of it's a flat oval um, races a little bit more like Phoenix. I think it's a great way to get set up for that championship run. So I think that Martinsville can almost give you a preview as to what to expect in the championship finale at Phoenix. So I would put the the star next to Martinsville. However, you've got to perform well on 1.5 mile ovals in order to get to Phoenix because those make up two of the next three races in order to get there. And those are going to be your first chances to secure your spot. So Martinsville with the star, but you also got to be good on the 1.5 mile ovals. Keeping in mind that the winner of last year's race at Martinsville was the one and only defending champion, Ryan Blaney. Exactly so, right. Big reason why that is going to have a lot to say about what goes on the week after. All right, so that is going to wrap it up. It's Las Vegas next week. So looking forward to that. Um, I'll have my bearings a little bit more. Uh, again, sorry I, we haven't been here for the last couple of weeks, but unfortunately the weather is the weather. And uh, hopefully I'll be better prepared next time, even though there was no reason for us to think anything like that was going to happen in the first place. So, but you got to prepare yourself. And uh, hopefully everybody down in South Florida uh, is preparing for themselves. Central Florida, even North Florida. We here in North Carolina know exactly what you're potentially going to go through. And and this one looks like it could be even more uh, damaging. So, uh, you know, we just hope everybody's going to be okay. Um, I, I'm glad. Look, they're, 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 they get prepared, and they're they're always ready for this. Um, Asheville hasn't seen something like this in like a hundred years. Um, those, those those Floridians, you know, they, they know what, what to expect here, and so um, we can only hope that uh, that they're going to bunker down and, and maybe even leave the area, uh, and that uh, they're going to be safe. So, um, yeah, uh, I don't know what else to say other than uh, you know, best of luck and. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be a lot of prayers out there for everybody out in Florida. Would you agree, CJ? Oh, I completely agree. I didn't know you were tossing it to me. Yeah, uh, everybody in Florida, we're thinking of you. Uh, take care, be safe, and we're glad to have you back, Greg. Um, it was a tough 10 days, so sorry to everybody, but glad you're back online and ready to get back at it in your new home here. Absolutely, 100%. Thanks, uh, everybody, for checking in with us once again. Uh, we've got, uh, what now, five more to go, right? Five more to go. And uh, it starts on Sunday with a road course, the final road course race of 2024. For CJ, we're doing a Rotowire. And again, don't forget, when, when, we, when I do the show on Sunday, we'll have links in the description for uh, CJ's fantasy report at rotowire.com. And we're back talking F1 when? We are back talking F1 uh, in not next week, but the following week when they come to CODA. When they come to, okay, that's Texas. Isn't that next week? Am I mixing up my days or mixing up my weeks? I think so. <laughs> Let's see, when is Texas? Yeah, I'm a week late. Yeah. So you're so the one they, that's getting yeah. all screwed up with the schedule, and I'm just the yep. one that's been uh, mispla- outplaced. Well, so. the race is two weeks away uh, from, well, I guess a week and a half away from here. Yeah. So from Almost today, two so weeks. October 20th, yeah. Coda, United States. So yeah, that would be next week, next, next Tuesday, Tuesday, the 15th. 15. We will resume talking Formula One. They've been off now for so long that I lost track of the calendar. And <laughs> count of the weeks, it's like that space in between Christmas and New Year's when you don't really know what day it is. That's what it's been like. <laughs> yeah, you can imagine how it's going to be for the drivers. So, uh, but hey, that's uh, they know they know what they're dealing with. That it, that's uh, that's their problem. All right, so that's going to wrap it up. Again, thanks for uh, checking us out. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed before. Like, share, all that stuff is really cool. Give us a comment, question, anything at all that we can answer for you, uh, either here or getting ready for uh, the race on Sunday when I return. 
uh, after qualifying and practice on Saturday. For, so for CJ, we're doing a great diploma. Glad to be back. We'll see you next time.